Hi, this is Pat Duckworth, the hot woman with cool solutions and the author of the number one international best-selling book, Hot Women Rock, How to Discover Your Midlife Entrepreneurial Mojo. And to celebrate the launch of the audio version of the book, I'm talking to the lovely co-authors who shared their stories. And, you know, grab a drink, get, get yourself a cuppa, or if it's evening, a glass of wine, because these women are sharing a lot of their experience and there's a lot of good learning to come from it, apart from the fact that it's just kind of a sociable thing to do. So today I'm talking to Karen Knott, and Karen is a fully qualified teacher, a coach, a mentor, who works specifically with women in their 50s and beyond to help them channel their particular mix of skills and experiences, talents and energy into a first time business, which not only provides them with a sense of personal purpose, but also makes them a solid income doing what they love. And one of the things I would say about talking to Karen is that I've talked a lot in these conversations about networking and building contact, supportive environment around you. And I met Karen through uh, another contact that I networked with, and then we met at a networking event. So this networking thing is just so important. So welcome, Karen. How are you doing today? Hi there, Pat. Very well, thank you. Very well indeed. Good. I'm looking a bit Halloween today. I'm getting a bit of an orange glow. <laughs> <laughs> You're not sat in front of a pumpkin or anything. No. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I won't go any further with the hot orange look. But anyway, <laughs> just moving on. So your story, you started out as a teacher and you had, you know, years of good experience with being a teacher. And then one day you decided you've done with teaching and you resigned and then you set off on a new career. Just tell us about that kind of pivot moment when you decided to do something new. Yeah, I mean, it was a sort of, it sounds like it was a snap decision, but in reality, it's one of those things which, you know, you sort of think, oh, I don't think I want to be doing this forever. You know, I think I want to do something different, but because that something different isn't tangible to you yet, you just sort of, you carry on. But I can remember when we used to sit around in the uh, staff room, we had what we called the escape committee. <laughs> Which is where we all used to sort of talk about, you know, well, what would you do if you weren't teaching and all that sort of thing. But, um, and then I sort of reached a stage where I just thought, look, you know, I can't just stay here in the escape committee. And forever so I thought right, I need to do something a bit different here so I did then decide you know what I'm just going to resign um, and that was uh, it sort of felt right and it sort of felt really really scary as yeah. well. because I didn't have a clue what else I wanted to do but sometimes you've got to sort of put yourself in a situation where you know okay well all I do know is I don't want to be doing this so I'll, I'll do that bit and then see what happens. Yeah. And, um, you know, uh, and the, yeah, that's how it, I sort of started off on a different path, if you like. You know. Yeah, I remember when I decided to take the early retirement package from the civil service and quite, I don't know how much thought you'd put into it. My boss decided to do the same thing, which came as a bit of a surprise. And once we both knew that we were leaving, I mean, I already had a plan. I'd already signed up to do my NLP and cognitive hypnotherapy training, but he didn't really have a plan. But the two of us were giggling so much, we had to keep going away from the rest of the team in case we disrupted them. So, you know, <laughs> we were not only the escape committee, we were digging the tunnel out. We... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So then you trained to be a coach. Well, not straight away. Okay. <laughs> it's, my, my journey is, I, mean, I like to say, you know, I took the scenic route to the game because I took all, I did all sorts of sort of weird and wonderful things in what I also called my sort of wilderness years. I didn't have a clue what I wanted to do. So what I did was I ended up doing all sorts of different things, which actually sort of, when, it, when you look back, you can see how that fulfilled something yeah. in me, you know, even though it wasn't going to ever be my long-term career. But um, I ended up in business with my partner, and one other as um, a trainer for 
several years. Um, you know, once a teacher, always a teacher sort of thing, you know, and I did like that, but, you know, I was training them how to use um, a computer-aided design package and it was very repetitive, you know, even the people were lovely, the actual job was quite repetitive. And, um, but the thing that really, the catalyst for me, Pat, was um, the death of both my parents within six months of each other. Yeah. And there's nothing quite like, you know, this thing about, you know, I'd always thought, manana, manana, and then suddenly it's like, look, you know, you're nearly 50 now, you know, it, either do it now, girl, or, or forget it, you know? Um, yeah, I think that's really important because my father died when he was 55 and that has inevitably that lurks in the back of your mind you know that you don't know when it's going to happen it was it was a shock and it's a it's a wake-up call that you should listen yeah, to yeah. I mean I was very young well I say very young now I look back I was very young um but you know, when you lose somebody significant at that age, or if you're getting to an age where, you know, parents die, it can be that moment where you really reassess what you're doing. Yeah, well, that, that's exactly how it was for me. And with hindsight, I sort of think that was, you know, my, my, my mother's gift to me, if you like, to make me sort of say, okay, you know, do it, do it now. No more thinking about it, no more prevaricating, procrastinating, do something yeah. um, but I didn't know what I still didn't know what so what I actually did was I got myself a coach a life coach um, and as I say to everybody that was just the best thing I ever did because you know coaching is such a I just think it's such a fantastic skill in as much as it gets all this stuff that's sort of here and sort of puts it out in front of you where you can look at it and then start to say, oh, oh, well, that bit fits with that bit. And, oh, God, there's another piece. And before you know it, you've sort of, you know, got your puzzle together. Yeah. Um, and, and it can be really valuable just talking things through with another person. Absolutely. absolutely yeah. Um, and then you've specialised into this area of, of women at midlife as well. Yeah. Well, I started off with... When, with my coach, I suddenly sort of had this thing about, oh my God, I want to be doing what you're doing. I don't think this is an uncommon reaction, but it was like, I want to do this. This is exactly, you know, this is where all everything sort of fits together for me. So she said, well, what are you going to do about it? <laughs> and it's like, oh, I have to take some action. <laughs> um, you know, that's always the bit that people sort of think, oh, I've got to do something. Um, so I did. I trained to be a life coach um, and set up as a life coach. And it's interesting because, you know, you attract people like you, I think. I immediately started attracting midlife women. And a proportion of those, a big proportion of those, were women who were very similar to me, sort of saying, I want to do something different. I don't want to carry on doing that. I don't want to be in this job forever. I want to do my own thing. And you know, having had my business experience, my coaching experience, my teaching, it's like I could really add value to them there. So yeah. that's when I thought, right, okay, I'm going to really specialise now on helping this group of women. Because, mm. you know, I love it, Pat. I just adore working with these dynamic women. It's, um, it's such a privilege. It really is. And at Midlife, they've, they've got so many experiences and knowledge, you know, women who stay at home to look after their kids they're project managers you know they know how to allot their time they know how to negotiate they know how to collaborate you know if they've been at work they've developed skills at work so there's, there's just all these different skill sets that they can use yeah and that's what really sort of upsets me a lot when I see when or hear women say things like but I haven't got anything that I could do as a business and it's like you already have everything yeah. everything you need you know what you might need is a bit of a helping hand just sort of pe pulling all those threads together piecing it together to make something viable but you know they certainly have everything already but uh, perhaps they don't actually see the value of what they actually have 
Absolutely. So this is Pat Duckworth, the author of Hot Women Rock, talking to Karen Knott today. And Karen, you've already mentioned a couple of times taking action. And one of the neurological levels that I talk about in the book is behavior. And the other one is resources and capabilities. And I think where we've been talking is this area of understanding what your resources and capabilities are and taking action to achieve what you want to achieve. Could you say something about that? Well, I can talk, you know, I can sort of see it from both sides, if you like, because there's a huge amount of resistance very often between sort of getting out there and doing the very thing that you want to do. So your mindset plays a crucial role in being able to take this action. But I think for a lot of women, it's like they wait, they want to wait until they've got everything together first. When the reality is you've just got to do it. Yeah. You've got to do even if you can't, what's that quote? If you can't see the whole stairway, take the first step or something. Mm. Um, and that is so true. You know, you don't need to see the entire stairway. That's that's a massive ask, isn't it, to know every step. But what you do need to do is to take that first step. Because when you've done that first step, you'll then be able to look back on where you've come from and then you'll be able to sort of say, okay, now I'm here, right. Now I need the next step. What's that next step? And so on and so on and so on. And it's, um, you know, before you know it, you have climbed the top of the stairs. You know, you know my, um, my shamanic power animal, that's a whole different story, but anyway, my shamanic no, no, okay. power animal. <laughs> <laughs> is the tortoise and when I and when I found it was the tortoise I thought I am nothing like the tortoise and then I realized the strengths of the tortoise is that it takes one step one step yeah. it just keeps moving yeah. forward yeah. it goes over really difficult terrain just by keep taking those steps yeah. yeah and it carries its place of safety with it so it can just when it needs to it can just retract and it, it's yeah. safe yeah. inside it and I thought you know what that is a blooming good power animal it really is it's like that um you know we all do live within our comfort zones to a certain extent but i think you know what happens at midlife is we sort of look around and think well actually my comfort zone isn't actually that comfortable anymore yeah so you know we know we know instinctively that where we want to go is going to take us outside of that zone um making that sort of leap is challenging there's no doubt about it you know it is challenging but i just think if you think well actually my comfort zone isn't doing it for me anymore so what am i going to do am i going to stay here forever in a place which is comfortable but isn't really or am i going to just gradually sort of you know i like to sort of say you know like that first step on the stairs you've just got to gently expand that comfort zone yeah not, you know not, not knock down all the walls and go charging through because quite often what happens then is we sort of think ah you know and then go scuttling back into our comfort zone but if you can gradually just sort of move those edges further 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 out yeah so what's the sort of top tip for deciding what actions take this i know every business is different but is there anything that you've noticed in common from the women that you've coached it's interesting because i mean i'm not sure if there is like one tip but the thing i've noticed about these women they always know what that thing is that they should should do they know it's you know it's in their heart of heart it's it, but it's, it's the challenge. They have this internal sort of dialogue with, you know, I know exactly what I need to do. Oh, God, that's so scary. And then they think of all the reasons why perhaps, you know, well, maybe I'll, well, maybe I'll wait. Maybe I'll yeah, just dot a few more I's and cross a few more T's. So I think if you can hear it within yourself, that is your next step. And if it feels too challenging to do it by yourself, that's what you just need to get some support because that's what makes all the difference I, I mean you were talking to begin with pat about you know we met at a networking group but you know i have all sorts of groups that 
I plug into to so, okay I'm a business coach you know perhaps some people might think well why should you need to do why should you need to get support but we all do yeah we all do you know and I just I couldn't do what I, I do without the amazing support I've got around me of you know networking working groups mastermind groups coaches of my own yeah because yeah I I mean, one of the coaches that I've worked with, because coaches need coaches, yeah. and yeah. Uh, he had a transactional coach, which is somebody who moves him along through his business, a transformational coach, who's somebody who takes him to the next level in his business, mm. a relationship coach, a health coach. Gosh, <laughs> <you know. laughs> coaches, because we all need people mm. who can kind of get us to the next level of whatever yeah. we're doing. Yeah. And I, I think it's definitely a transition that we move through mm. in middle. I mean, um, in, in many different ways, you know, I always liken it to like a second adolescence, uh, you know, and as much as that's a transition that we make then from, you know, a teenager into adulthood, I think in midlife, we move into this new phase of life as well. Um, but yeah, all absolutely. transitions have their challenges, but it's, you know, you just have to sort of take it step by step. Yeah. Just keep thinking about that tortoise, just wandering along there. And I think it's fantastic actually. Cause like you, when you first said tortoise, I thought, Pat, uh-uh. <laughs> 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 gazelle or something, I don't know, or a leopard or, but not a tortoise, but you know, there's a lot to be said for the tortoise. <laughs> At least it wasn't a snail, <laughs> yeah. and, it, and it could have been, you know. Yeah. There we are. Yeah. <laughs> Karen, it's been such fun talking to you. If any of our viewers or readers would like to contact you or find out more about what you do, how can they do that? Oh, the best place is to catch me on my website, which is www.primetimebusiness.co.uk, or you can um, pop over to Facebook. I'm on Facebook. Um, personally as Karen not or uh, uh, primetime business is there as well so it'd be lovely if people pop over and say hello excellent so thanks again Karen and thanks to everybody who's been watching so the audiobook of hot women rock how to discover your midlife entrepreneurial mo mojo which is exactly what we've been talking about this morning the audiobook is now available on amazon and i will be doing more of these interviews so keep watching out for them have a brilliant day